What's up everybody? So today what I want to do is go over how to change the springs on the tremolo system on an American Professional Stratocaster. So this is a 2017 American Professional Daphne Blue with saddles and two screws that hold this bridge down. This is a limited edition so you have a rosewood neck here which you actually really have to take care of and this is going to be something we really need to change the springs on. So what I'm really trying to do on this one is I'm going to add two more springs than what it has because this is why. When you play the style of music especially that I play or if you actually like to play things like I don't know, things that are a little faster, like Eric Johnson, Yingve, Mom, Steen, Slash, but he doesn't have to worry about this because the neck radius on his guitar is actually a lot bigger in a Gibson than it is a Strat. When you're doing a guitar like this, you really want as much even tension across the strings as you can have. Now, when you're playing a guitar like this also, they come factory with three springs in the back. We, I really want five. I really want five because it's simple physics, right? On the tremolo system on the back of this guitar, when you add two extra springs, you're creating more tension in the back. Um, essentially, it's not going to be very, very tight here because the tension when you add the two extra springs to the back of here actually loosens the tension on the fretboard. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So today, that would be my goal. People like, I believe John Mayer even do this. He has four or five springs in the back. It just makes it a little bit easier to play. Now, I mean, I'm, you know, if you're playing things that are a bit slower, this might not really be a big difference to you. But for somebody like me, when I end up shredding and playing a lot of fast notes, you know, the different, the small minute differences make a huge deal. So let's take this thing apart and we're gonna go through the back plate here and we are going to check this out real quick. So, as you can see on this guitar, in the back we have six of these. We're gonna take them off real quick. Now what's really important to remember as I'm doing this, and as a side note, what's very important to remember, when you have one of these necks or even fretboards that are rosewood, especially this limited edition rosewood you see here, this is very porous wood. It does not have a finish on it like maple. So the, the essentially, it does not have the same finish as maple, and it's not completely glossed. So you need to take care of this wood. Things, This kind of wood that's very porous, like rosewood or ebony, you need to make sure maybe a couple of times a year you use some lemon oil on it or some fret polish. I'm sorry, lemon oil or some kind of other fret board polish because it absorbs that. And the problem with not actually taking care of a fret board that's either rosewood or ebony or a porous wood like that that doesn't have a, a serious finish on it, like a serious um, a finish that's very, 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 very lacquered is what I'm trying to say, is that the fretboard curls up and when it becomes dry, it pushes the frets up. You need to take care of it. This is a perfect example and I'll show you after we go over this. So you see in this guitar, we have three black springs. They come stock, right? Now, these springs, the thing about these springs, right, is that if you see this here, they go parallel. A lot of metal or shred players, they like to take the outermost ones and put them into the innermost clip up here. So they leave it down here, but they actually bring it towards the loop that's closest to the center. The argument there is that it creates a bit more stability. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that simply because the stability in a, in a system like this, and this, is, this has nothing to do with guitar as much as it does physics. And I'm actually a medical professional and I have a lot of background in science and physics. So let me just spit a little knowledge here. The reality is when you have an object that has to travel an, essentially an extra distance than what it should, that creates more momentum and that creates more energy that has to be used 
So that's not necessarily a good thing. Where here it's straight, it takes one set path to the vibration itself. It takes one set path from the bridge, you pluck the string, vibration goes to the, the, the block here, then comes out to the spring. So when you have these tremolo systems where people take the loop here and actually put it in closer, so it looks like a diamond shape, you're actually creating a longer pathway because you're stretching the string out more. Now, that, that's almost like the equivalent of having less than three springs. You don't want that necessarily. So the reason being is that it's not stable. It's just not stable. These pathways here that are like almost angled because they're put in the center loops, they have to travel a longer distance. The sound has to travel a longer distance up these. While the middle one isn't moved, it's not equal. So I don't agree with that. And it's gonna make it a bit rougher to play on the fretboard. When you're playing fast, that makes a huge difference. So, going into this a little bit further, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and this seems pretty simple here, because there's holes here to add the springs. And what I'm going to do is add two more springs, one here and one here. Now again, if you look at it in a physics kind of way, it's going to create more tension down here. And what that will do is create less tension on the neck. All I'm really gonna do is show you guys the springs that I got. So basically, I've got these, I use these a lot, these Ernie Ball M Steel. Steel are great because they're very high output and they resonate very well with the kind of pickups that are in this American uh, professional 2017 special edition Daphne Blue with rosewood neck. So, these are the springs, right? Check these out. So you can really grab these from from anywhere, right? I picked these up at a place which I am not going to plug because I was not happy with the service. But I did after that end up going to Guitar Center and kind of verified what my fear was after leaving the first place and that was the guy that waited on me and actually gave me these here I felt was a bit of a dope so I wanted to verify that what he gave me was indeed true so these will actually work now when you look at this what you really want to do and understand is that after you make any adjustment to this tremolo you're gonna to have to retune so Let's kind of get this in here first. I mean, the best thing to really do here, because you're gonna end up resetting this guitar up after you're done, is release the tension up here. So these springs come back. You're gonna end up resetting the guitar anyway. I mean, you could really try. There's not an issue with trying to put these tremolo strings on, but it's a big stretch. For example, like, I can try it right now to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So when we put this on, we're putting that trem right there. Now you'll notice if I flip this guitar over after putting that spring on, check out the bridge. The bridge is now flat to the body. Again, it creates way more tension there. So the bridge, as you can see, is flat right to the body. Now I'm not saying that's a bad thing because a lot of people like to deck their tremolos systems, but let's, let's turn this over and add the other spring, okay? and then we're going to adjust it from there. It's kind of funny, if you look at this, you see it comes stock with black, and that's what they give these, apparently they give these um, um, special edition ones. Although I, I'm pretty sure the other ones are also black and the other American professionals. So let's try this, this other one. Again, I would advise kind of, I have low action, and my tremolo is almost decked, so there's not a ton of tension there to begin with. But somebody who has a floating tremolo, where that tremolo is like kind of, it's not flat to the body like you just saw that's kind of angled up, you can see under the bridge. That you might want to kind of loosen the tension here, which means these screws come out uh, before you do this. You could even, it might even be advisable to take your strings off first. Now where I'm just adding, I'm just essentially adding two. I'm not moving them around. There's not gonna be a point where all of these springs are off. So what I'm doing here for now is essentially okay. So it's very simple. You wanna make sure the pin is pointing down obviously to lock in there and you wanna make sure the loop is on the down part of the spring. 
So let's add this last one in here. And again, this is really pulling on this bridge. So let's turn this around here a little bit and see what this bridge now looks like. So as you can see, let me get a good angle for you. You're really, you're really, really, as you can see, you're really flat here. So let's kind of set this bad boy up, right? I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to move these screws. And what's advisable to have now, right? So I would get something like this. Check this out. This will measure the action in 30 seconds. That's what I like to measure it in. So now going back to the guitar, you also see this sitting here. These are Allen wrenches to adjust the action, right? If you need to, or even the saddles, right? So the notably, the first thing I notice here is when I put that in, the tension is like a lot less on these strings actually, wow. So as you can tell, this is out of tune. Now that's because those extra springs pulled this down. So what I'm going to do now is reset this guitar up. Now I'm going to completely deck this tremolo system. So what I really need to do is get a flat head here, right? We also need a screwdriver. I'm going to grab a flat head. Now we have all our tools, right? We have our flat head and that's going to enable us to bring this bridge up and down, right? We have our screwdriver that helped us remove the back plate, right? Then we have our Allen wrenches in case we need to adjust the saddles or the action on the neck. So let's go through how to set this up. The first thing you really want to do is see what's standing out first, right? What's standing out to me is that this was pulled so hard from the new springs that this bridge actually is going at this angle down. So we need to flat, we want to deck this completely and we want to turn these screws to the right and that'll have the front part of this bridge actually touch the wood because it's not now completely. So everything you want to do in very small quarter turns and then retune after you do it. So for example, I'm going to bring this down, quarter tune, bring this down, quarter turn and we're going to check it out see if it's laying flat it's actually not laying flat so let's do let's do another quarter turn here right let me check that out that's flat let's see this side this side's almost flat seems like this is actually a little bit higher there we go, okay. Okay, now we're both decked. So, so it's out of tune. What you really want to do is you really wanna tune this. So what I'm going to do is use a tuner on my guitar. I'm sorry, on my phone. First string sounds good. You can hear it buzzing. Now I tune a half step down. Okay, so we're tuned and we're probably gonna have to intonate, right? Because it sounds a bit off. Um, it's pretty good. It's not horrible, but
All right, guys, so we just want to make sure, going through this a little further, that we're not buzzing too much. Check the action. 230 seconds on each string at the 12th fret. The 12th fret that's closer to the bridge pickup. Very good, 230 seconds, 230 seconds. All right, we're not buzzing. Sounds good. Now you really want to make sure the intonation is okay. This On this guitar it sounds fine. And basically to wrap it all up, one must understand that these little saddles here, you can adjust the action on, well, you're not really supposed to adjust the action on these, but you actually can to fine tune it. Really what you want to do first is when you're doing the setup on the guitar, you want to adjust the claw here first. And you want to adjust the height of where this is sitting off the body, the bridge. And then after that, when you get these saddles and everything situated to the way you want them, you probably would want to adjust the action and the saddles la very last, should be the last adjustment you do, simply because this alters like almost everything. And it, it's just this, this is a very fine tuned kind of thing to adjust your action, to adjust the truss rod. With this setup and these extra springs in the back, if we go back to it, there is more. Now, if there's more pathway for this to travel, meaning if there's more spring, so five strings, as you can see, as opposed to the original three, the black that there were, if there's more pathway for it to travel, it should be more resonant. Think about it, it's very basic principles. So the, the guitar probably will have a bit more sustain to it. And the other thing is because the bridge is not floating and it's touching the body, that certainly makes things more resonant. You're gonna get more tone out of it that way. Um, as far as a resonant tone, I mean. Some other people like the tone of the bridge floating. I'm not arguing that, that's completely different. I'm talking about, if we're talking about physics, if we're talking about things like that, when things are touching, they vibrate better, right? And they transfer motion better. Statistically, the way, <laughs> statistically anyway, and this is quite subjective, the fact th th that this is set up in such a manner means this should efficiently transmit sound. And that's essentially what I'm trying to say. Now, other people might like the bridge floating, Right, so this bridge here. Some people might like this up and arched a bit. And they might like that tone. But you're going to get more sound and you're going to get more volume and you're going to get more frequency if everything is touching. This bridge is touching the body. If it was floating, it would not be. So the only conductor here and the only pathway the vibration would take is through these screws or the claw or the block in the back you're not getting it from the bridge that's floating because it was floating. Now that the bridge isn't floating, it's a more resonant flow. I happen to like this sound. This sounds really clean and clear. Um, the notes are a lot more articulate and now, and also the sustain, and now that we have these two extra springs in there, there's a notable difference in the tension here. It's a lot easier to maneuver and bend these strings. So it all it depends on what you're going for. If you like blues and you like to be able to stretch them strings, right? If you like to be able to do that and you like kind of, you don't like the give on the strings, then yeah, you'd probably like a floating trem. This thing would be popping up a bit. You might think twice about adding a fifth string, uh, I'm sorry, a fifth spring in the back. But again, you have people like John Mayer, right? He uses four or five springs. So it's, it's all about the tonal quality. It just carries it better. It transmits it better. It has to, it has more pathways for the sound to move through. One, two, three, four, five. All right guys, this is the end of the video. Just make sure when you change your springs, after every adjustment you make to set up your guitar, you retune it because every small adjustment you make, it's going to go out of tune. Don't make 20 adjustments and then all of a sudden expect it to be okay. You need to just make sure every time you make an adjustment, you change things. So please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with your friends.